who the f would make something like this up or add something to it or or whatever it may be. I can't I can't even I'm an advocate. I want them to see that I fought back. And I want a little gay boy who might watch this to see that I fought back. And it does not take anything away from people that are not able to do that. But I fought back. They ran off. I didn't. What do you say to a young gay man, a young gay person? To learn to fight. And I don't just mean, like, learn to fight. Mm, mm, mm. More now on the case of Jesse Smollett as we wait for him to appear in court. With me now, CNN political commentator Anna Navarro and LZ Granderson is a sports and culture columnist for the Los Angeles Times and for CNN. And, I mean... Uh, LZ, and, and by the way, I want to see I want to see your shirt. Let's show everyone your shirt <laughs> based on real events. Drop the banner based on real events. Throwing a little yep. shade his way. How are you feeling? Definitely feeling like I'm throwing some shade uh, his way. Now, I'm trying to be cautious because just because someone has been arrested or accused of a crime doesn't net automatically mean the person is you know, guilty of said crime. We've seen time and time again, people yeah. who've been arrested, not, you know, actually have committed the crime. But with that being said, the evidence does not look good. The timeline never looked good. And I, for one, as an openly gay black man in the media, am incredibly frustrated, angry, upset that someone would use their platform in this way to promote only themselves. You know, when this first started to be, you know, People started to talk about, you know, why and the skepticism. There was a thinking that, well, maybe he did it to draw attention to the issue of gay rights and racism. Maybe he did this for political reasons. Not excusing it, but it made a little bit more sense because it felt like it was bigger than himself, what he was trying to do. Now you find out it was just about him and money. Dissatisfied with this, his just, salary is what the police <laughs> superintendent said. That to me is just absolutely frustrating it makes me angry we've seen people use racism and homophobia in this society for the personal gain in the past but for some reason this just feels worse because he positioned himself as a leader of a cause while also doing this sort of thing and i don't know anna you i don't know how you feel about this but i i just he has absolutely no space none whatsoever to reassert himself in any of these conversations that he inserted himself with if this act is indeed has been a hoax. What are you thinking? Well, I, I think LC is completely right. You know, I was speaking uh, today to a, a friend of mine who's uh, pretty big in, in uh, the TV and uh, Hollywood industry, and he said, look, this guy's now untouchable in this industry. It's a hard thing to be. Um, what LC said is completely right. I was mentioning to you, I literally saw him seven, eight days before this event took place in Miami at a TV industry event called Living the Dream, put on by Tyler Perry, celebrating Martin Luther King Day, mm. talking about diversity and inclusion and the experiences of being mm. a black man and a gay man on TV and in Hollywood and why we need more representation and equal rights. And, you know, he did uh, play himself off as an advocate which is for me when this happened, because I had just seen him do that role. It was a, a moderated by Nichelle Turner, who we all know. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't, under, I, I still can't understand how the guy I saw talking passionately and emotionally about his experiences as a gay black man uh, in the TV industry could possibly do something like this. And I think, you know, the anger and frustration you hear in Elsie's voice, friends of mine who are gay, or black, or gay and black, so many of them are feeling exactly the same way because they, you know, because it is because there is a spike in hate crimes, because these things do happen. Yep. And so for this man to cheapen it in order to uh, make himself more important and more valuable is is unforgivable. It is absolutely unforgivable. I think that's the point that we all. I want to turn the discussion toward, you know, the real victims. And that is one of the things that this Chicago police superintendent really highlighted today, right? How, how, how to, how, how these v real victims will feel. Um, listen to what he said. I'm also concerned about what this means moving forward.
for hate crimes. Now, of course, the Chicago Police Department will continue to investigate all reports of these types of incidents with the same amount of vigor that we did with this one. But my concern is that hate crimes will now publicly be met with a level of skepticism that previously didn't, didn't happen. It, I mean, LZ, as I was watching him, I kept thinking, gosh, if you're, if you're a young gay person, um, maybe not entirely uh, co fully comfortable in your own skin, or a young black gay person and you see this story and you have been targeted or could be targeted what are you thinking what are you feeling what are the consequences of this you know let's pull it back a little bit and think about uh the number one reason why women who have been victims of sexual assault tend Don't not to up. want to be public about it right because of the scrutiny because of being second guessed because not being believed so I believe absolutely that same principle applies here. Mm. When you have one of the biggest stars who happen to fit that intersection of being a racial minority as well as a sexual orientation minority doing something like this, if you are a victim of a true crime, you might be hesitant because you don't want to be second guessed. And it's already hard enough to be a victim once. You don't want to be victimized twice in the public eye or in front of a police officer. Chicago has a long history of, of working very closely with the LGBT community. I used to live in Chicago. I've known the officers who are liaisons in the city for a number of years. They work very hard to make sure that the community in general feels safe when we're out and about because hate crimes do happen. What Jesse has done is make their jobs more difficult because now they have to convince victims to come forward and press charges when they may face this level of scrutiny that the, that the police chief was talking about. It's very, very disheartening, and trust me, I mean, I don't speak for all gay people, I don't speak for all black people, that brother has no space in any capacity in my life as far as I'm concerned, television or otherwise. You know, one of the things um, the superintendent of police said was that he had smeared Chicago. Yep. I want to tell you, this superintendent of police, the Chicago Police Department, have made Chicago proud. Mm. Because the way that they have handled this case from the beginning, the seriousness with which they took it, and the seriousness with which they are now taking these developments, and not letting anybody get away with it, it really is, I think, speaks so highly of, of that police force and, uh, and their integrity and character. And you could tell that for that chief, Eddie Johnson, who is African-American, this cut very deep, very personally. It is his city, yep. but it is also his community, his, his racial group. I mean, it just, you know, this is, this is, this is something that, um, th that I think he, he does not, yeah, I think LC is right, he does not recover from. And then he was asked, you know, what will justice look like? And he talked about if, if Jesse Smollett apologized, apologized to the city of Chicago. But I want to ask you all if that's enough or if he just needs to go away or what, what people need to know and to hear. And also that the piece that, that, that Superintendent Johnson mentioned about how this has become part of the 2020 presidential race, how political candidates have weighed in, what you two think should happen now as a result of, of learning this was a hoax. So please stand by.